A lot of people credit you with starting the death metal scene, the death metal genre. What do you think when they say that? Um, well, it's definitely flattering, but I really can't consider myself to have started it. I think bands like Venom, uh, in my opinion, Venom were the first. When you think of the genre of metal in the late 80s into the 90s, what bands come to mind? Most think of Pantera, Metallica, Sepultura, or Cannibal Corpse, pretty much some big names from thrash, groove, and death metal. However, one band that's been covered by a great deal of dust over the years is a band called Death. The founder, Chuck Schuldiner, is often referred to as the godfather of death metal. In 1983, at the age of 16, Chuck founded the iconic death metal band Death, and he played a very pivotal role in shaping and defining the death metal genre. The band's early releases, including Scream, Bloody Gore, and Leprosy, showcased Chuck's remarkable songwriting and guitar skills. Earning him a reputation as a driving force in extreme metal. I would like to live forever if it's possible. I'm not into dying or into seeing people die or animals. You know, I'm a lover of life and, and of, of friendship and dogs and cats and, you know, whatever. Tragically, Chuck Shoulder's life was cut short when he succumbed to complications from brain cancer on December 13th of 2001 at the age of 34. Despite his untimely death, his influence on the metal genre endures. Many bands cite Chuck and Death as major inspirations, and his impact on the evolution of extreme metal is immeasurable. The thing that most people also don't realize about Chuck was he was arguably one of the nicest and kind-hearted souls in the metal scene. He always seemed to have a look on life in a very positive manner and always expressed love for things like animals, friends, and just general aspects of living a happy life. Uh, Chuck, I have to tell you that for all your reputation as being like the death metal guru, you're far too nice <laughs> and too Actually, pleasant. I would like to sure just to crush any misconceptions of death metalers being cruel to animals or anything. It really shows that one's art isn't always a reflection of their personality all the time. I'm an animal lover, and uh, yeah, you know, people will probably be surprised when if they met a lot of bands, you know, especially in this type of music, because everyone seems extreme and, you know. I absolutely love how the Godfather of Death Metal was one of the nicest and most positive frontmen in all of music. For someone who fronted a band that was as brutal and unrelenting as the mighty death, Mr. Schuldiner was surprisingly down to earth and a total sweetheart. Super good looking too. Rest in peace maestro, you are missed. Probably one of the 10 most important people in metal history. Rest in peace Chuck. Being that Chuck's career had such a huge impact on the world of metal, it seems not very many fans of the genre are even familiar with his name. Therefore, I'm going to be taking you through the forgotten music theory of Chuck Schuldiner exploiting his composition, shredding, and overall musicianship throughout his career. So let's sit back and take a deep dive in one of the most influential musicians of metal. Now, Death had a total of seven studio albums, so I'm going to highlight their best song from each based both on popularity, fan favorites, and overall music theory and composition. One more side note, there is a really awesome YouTuber named Varvis, and he goes through the great songwriting of Chuck Schuldiner, and he goes through a lot of the song form and his compositional aspects, and I'd really highly encourage you to go give him some love and watch his video because it's a really awesome and fantastic video to get to know how Chuck Schuldiner works when he writes all of these songs. Death's first studio album is titled Scream Bloody Gore, released in 1987. The first song we must look into is the second track titled Zombie Ritual. So the chord progression follows a simple 165 in G minor, while the lead guitar uses a Phrygian dominant. Now what's interesting is we already modulate into D minor when the fast drums kick in. But strangely, we use a major third in D minor, or F sharp, and this quickly resolves into the minor third, and then into the dominant chord, which would be A major, to further lock in D minor. Now, on this channel, we've talked a lot about modulation, modal mixture, and all that good stuff. And being that Alexi Laiho of Children of Bodom was an expert at both of these, you'll notice a lot of really cool similarities between Chuck and Alexi. 
Now, the major third is an extremely common aspect of modal mixture, basically borrowing from the parallel major, D major. Looking at the difference between D major and D minor, it's weird to think that an F sharp would somehow make things even more dissonant. So when composing like this, context is absolutely key. And a modulation from G minor into D minor really isn't that far off, only one flat difference in the circle of fifths. Now clearly, Chuck had some sort of influence from thrash metal, maybe with Megadeth because of the chromaticism in measure 56, and in the guitar solo, we switch into A minor, sometimes throwing in the Ray 7, using some really impressive octave jumps and shred runs. And now, using that raised seventh is what's going to imply the dominant chord and the diminished chord, giving us that extra nice dissonance and tension before we can resolve. Now, Death's second studio album is titled Leprosy. For this record, we're going to look at the song Pull the Plug, as the lyrics really showcase the darkness he wrote, even though he was mostly really down to earth and happy. It seems that Chuck uses music to express the darker aspects of life, and as he says, to help ensure that anger is something we should all never let overcome us, something we can all really learn from. Brutal lyrics for the sake of being brutal, rather than putting some thought into and trying to conquer what people already think of heavy metal and, and death metal or hard rock in general. I want to keep continuing grow, to grow as a musician and as a person in life and to try to put into the music what I learn, so to speak. Now, this song is harmonically very, very dark, using a lot of Megadeth intervals, like the flat two and the flat five. And since lots of people are gonna ask if he even knew the theory that I'm talking about, the first thing you must understand is that Chuck wasn't a fan of lessons. He liked to take things in his own hands. For 99.9% .9 of guitarists, this would typically result in boring and predictable junk. But, as people speculated, Chuck seemed to come up with theory of his own. I mean, give yourself decades of playing around by yourself, using your ear, and then eventually being around other really awesome musicians, you sort of just learn things on your own, and it ends up just being what we already know with music theory. Moving on to Death's third studio album titled Spiritual Healing, released in 1990, the song is a pretty wild ride, showcasing some really interesting stuff. Now the intro begins with this interesting chord progression, again using the major third as well as the raised seventh. G minor, B, F sharp, B flat, and then G minor. The main riff in the verse uses a dark D minor lick with a flat two or E flat, as well as you guessed it, the major third. The song inevitably modulates more around a black metal-esque chord progression using things like E minor, F sharp minor, G minor, and more. This is a simple concept of going around a ton of close by minor keys with a fast offbeat snare drum type beat. And a few time signature changes until we solidify 6-4 in the solo, and you can think of 6-4 time as 6 quarter notes per measure, sounding a lot like 6-8. Anyways, the tapping solo is playing around arpeggios that would be comparable to a Danny Elfman score, as it's filled with minor after minor arpeggios that are a little bit less related to each other. This can be thought of in terms of music theory outside of the 12 keys on the wheel we're used to, and more so of the neo Romanian theory, or just using closely related triads that aren't really within any sort of key. The solo for Chuck is in E harmonic minor, and James Murphy grabs a cool solo with more dissonant chord progressions. Human is up next. Being released in 1991, we must look into the fifth track titled Lack of Comprehension. The intro uses a B-flat Lydian scale, as well as diatonic B-flat major scale. Once again, Chuck crushes the weird time signatures, and it doesn't really sound that offbeat, it just transitions really smooth. The next riff uses B-flat major and D minor, some pretty closely related keys, as the key signatures aren't really that far away on the circle of fits. We get some speed of 204 beats per minute as the song goes and using more of a dark D minor feel. And again, some great works of the flat two, a common interval for this time period. And anyways, the first solo has a nice slower tempo of 120 beats per minute, giving us a very similar feel to the intro with more of a G harmonic minor feel. 
As of now, we've uncovered some of Chuck's really cool composing methods of almost sounding like a progressive metal band with all these odd time signature changes, modal mixture, and clever modulation. And it's said that Chuck has a lot of inspiration from progressive bands and classical jazz music, a really interesting subgenre of jazz musicians using classical elements. Not to derail too much, but the music has changed a lot over time, to say the least. From medieval to renaissance to baroque, and then classical to romantic. It was then the post-romantic era of modernism that inspired a combination of jazz and classical music. Due to the rising fame of Mahler, Schoenberg, Strauss, jazz composers like George and Thiel, and Larry Austin, it's very cool to see Schuldiner's influence being brought out by this song. The Philosopher is the final track off the 1993 album Individual Thought Pattern. The intro uses a simple D minor chord progression, with a 1, a 4, a 3, and then a 5. The verse uses E flat as the tonic until we're back in D minor, and again, more major 3 stuff and modulate into G minor. Symbolic is the next album. And the song, titled Symbolic, is also using D minor with a flat 2, and again, of course, the major 3rd. Looking at the guitar solo, it's an incredible harmony of two guitars using E flat and D minor, and even E harmonic minor. One of my personal favorite songs by death, titled Crystal Mountain. The song mostly follows D harmonic minor, so C sharp instead of C natural, also using similar things like the flat 2 and the flatted 5th, Chuck also crushes the vocals with the minor second in the 19th measure, and in general just kills it on making catchy guitar melodies and vocal hooks. Using more D Phrygian dominant here at 131, and the interlude guitar melody uses G harmonic minor with a flat fifth, sounding very dark and evil. You can think of this as the Hungarian minor scale, which is basically the harmonic minor scale, but you also get to raise the fourth scale degree or flat the fifth. And the next song being Voice of the Soul is a beautiful intro. And we hear some really cool sounding acoustic guitar work using D minor with some very classical sounding lead guitar melodies. And it really is some of his best work to show someone who's never heard of Chuck before. modulate into G minor soon after and overall it's just a beautiful song and it's kind of amazing how the harmonies and melodies work so incredibly well together. It's heartbreaking to hear the most casual metal fans aren't even that familiar with Mr. Chuck Schuldiner, but maybe this will help spread the word a little bit. Of course many people to this day still love his work and overall hold a high appreciation for him as a musician and as a person and overall he's someone we should all inspire to be more like <laughs> sure just to crush any misconceptions of death metalers being cruel to animals or anything i'm an animal lover and uh yeah you know people will probably be surprised when if they met a lot of bands you know especially in this type of music because everyone seems extreme and you know they put on this image, but you know, I'm definitely whatever trying to break that. Yeah. You know, we're people too.